Welcome back folks and welcome to another tutorial. This one is going to focus on the template that we made in the last video. I'm just going to go over that so you understand really what's uh, what's happening in that. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so we've got our notepad open and the first few lines Yeah, the first few lines are importing external libraries into our script. So here we can see the system library that, that includes stuff like um, exiting the program, which is mainly what I use it for. I include it in all my templates because I, I just use it all the time. Uh, random, because I like to uh, generate random numbers. That's really important in uh, in game making because you want to add a little bit of unpredictableness to your script. And maths, because some games uh, obviously require lots of complex mathematics, especially uh, cosine. Uh, angles and stuff like that and our important library here which is Pygame and this one here this one is GFX library which isn't in the stable release and this is why I mentioned it in the in the last video of getting the alpha because this has some uh, extra functionality to it that you don't get in the stable release so uh, it's worth adding that there and you have to uh, you have to import it separately to Pygame and what this line here does is it imports pygame variables so that you don't have to type pygame dot variable you can just type the, vi the variable and it works like that you can see down here we use quit here instead of python get pygame dot quit it just makes it a lot easier uh, i think there's some also also some color variables as well that you can you can use in the same way so uh, I've put down here, this, this script is in my uh, GitHub repository, by the way. So if you want to download this, you can. It says here that um, what I use is capital letters for some of my variables. That means that that variable will not change throughout the entire script. So from start to finish, that value will not change. It just makes it highlight the constants, if you like. Um, there are a few exceptions to the rule, like uh, like here we have DS. Um, DS is the display surface, and yes, the display surface does change, but I just feel like DS is more like the container variable, um, So, and that doesn't change. It's, it'll always be uh, the container for the display surface. So let's, uh, let's go into the script then. This uh, Pi game in it is essential to... Um, our Pi game games. It initializes the library, a bit like a bit like ordering a pizza or something. You wouldn't go into a, a, a pizza restaurant and say, I'm I've come to pick up my pizza. They won't know what you're talking about. You'd have to ring ahead first. So, and this is what this is about. It just tells Pi game that we're going to be using it in a moment. The next line it defines the width of our display. Uh, in this case, it'll be 800. And the reason why I define the display width. Uh, prior to um, setting the mode is because I'd like to be able to do things with the uh, variable later on like like this half width equals display width divided by two and in order to affect all all the key points that require the display width all I need to do is change that variable there to a different one and it'll affect everything throughout the entire script rather than rather than have eight loads of 800s that i need to change uh, if i change my mind on the resolution so what this line does is it gives us a total pixel count of our display area so in this uh, instance we've got um, 800 times 600 which gives us a total of 40, 480,000 pixels, uh, which is a lot, although not, not according to most displays anyway. And what this one does, this starts the display. If you uh, remember in the last video, what we did was we ran the template at the end and a window appeared. Well, that is what this command does. This, this will initialize that window and uh, open it up so and obviously we need 
the variable there, the container, so we can reference it later on. So what I'll do now is I'll just show you quickly that window opening up. So where are we? Here we are. Right, so here we are. Tutorials tutorial one dot py. And there we go. So that line that we saw before, set mode, uh, display width, display height, starts this window up here. Without that, that window would not appear. There we go. Let's get rid of that. What we're going to do now is define a function which looks for events either on the keyboard or on the window. If we go back to our command prompt and we run that thing, that program again, what we see is the the X in the corner here. That is an event. If that's if that's pressed, that's an event. Also, keyboards like uh, escape and you know all the other bits, all the other keys on the keyboard, they're also events. Mouse clicking is an event. Mouse moving is an event. And uh, just to show you what I mean, click that. It closes. Now, if, if we didn't have this function here, what would happen is the window wouldn't be able to close properly. It would just crash. Um, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, da, 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 da. We go down to our main loop here. We comment that out so it doesn't apply to our script. And then we run that again. Uh, excuse me. We run that again. And now look. We've got this uh, circle of death here, and we're not responding because because the the, the script is not telling Windows that uh, it's been interacted with. So that's what happens. And now look, we've got it crashed. There's something gone wrong. It's because it's not talking to Windows. It's not asking for any updates or interaction. So we'll, we'll put that back in uh, and we'll go through the, we'll quickly go through the, um, the event handler because, because we've got a loop here going on, there could be a point where an event occurs, where a key press, where we're not actually in the event handler routine or um, function. So what happens is whenever you press a key, it gets entered into a stack. And then that stack just gets bigger and bigger and bigger until we call our uh, event handler. And then we go through a loop and we extract all those events that have happened uh, prior to us calling the event handler. And we go through them and then we pick out the ones that we want. Now, once we've gone through them, what happens is that clears the stack. So it's fresh. Windows knows that um, we're interacting with it and it doesn't think oh my god this program's crashed so that's all good um, so the event type here that could be the uh, window closing quit there that's uh, if we press the X in the corner or now we've got here keyboard events we're looking for so in this particular one we're doing is wait we're looking for the escape key pressed down. Two things affect the quitting of this program. One is the X in the corner and two if we press the escape key. There we go. And then what we do here is we quit Pygame and we also quit through the system library. And that's it. That's that's the program over. You don't get more close than that. Now this uh, this bit defines the main program routine. A lot of people like to structure their main program routine in a um, define in a function. I like to just keep it at the bottom there, just because it I know where it is and just makes me just makes me feel more comfortable with it. I don't know why. Maybe I maybe I should change my approach to it, but it doesn't matter. It's, it it still works, and you know. If it's not broken, don't fix it. So here we are. We're in the uh, we're in the loop, and what what we're doing here is this while true is what we're doing is that condition there. The true condition is never going to change. So this this while loop 
it's going to con go on continuously forever um, until obviously we call our event handler here while we're going on forever we're going to be calling the event handler um, to talk to Windows and say hello we're still still alive so what this line does is it updates the display anything that we write to it uh, pixel circles um, anything like that will not be shown until we call this line here that is because if we if we write to it that takes a little bit of time and what what would happen is if we didn't update it in one go we would get a, a kind of flickering especially when we clear it like this because clearing obviously takes a long time because we have to go from the top of the screen to the display to the bottom of the display uh, and fill it with black so that takes time and if we keep continuously doing that through our loop then it's just going to look horrid so we do all the graphics uh, work that we need to do and then we update it and everything looks great that's pretty much it really there is a the result another thing that I'd like to show you but that I'll do that in the next video and that is frames per second it might be in this video it might be in the next video. I don't know but we'll get to it anyway so anyway thanks for watching guys and I'll uh, see if see you for the next video and what we'll do is we'll write some graphics to our display surface or maybe put a little square on there or something or a circle the world's our oyster anyway thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon.